Hey everybody, I'm Rob Raybon, and on today's video, we're going to install a JDM backup alarm on our Nissan Skyline. I would normally do this kind of video in my garage, but there's a lot of people up there, a lot of garage neighbors, and they're being loud, and it's, uh, it's not really good audio. So, I'm doing this in my driveway. So, you might be asking yourself, why would you need a backup alarm? Number one is safety. If you have a big GTR wing and a gurney flap and a roll cage in a way, you could possibly run over a small child or something or a dog you don't want to run over dogs cats i guess too maybe i don't know maybe if you're a cat person the other reason that you would want one is because it's awesome i love my car and i want it to be able to talk to me especially when it's an asian woman's voice makes me feel loved so to do this install you're going to need the backup alarm you're going to need a little bit of wire you're going to need a switch if you want to put a switch in you're going to need a little bit of hardware to mount it like a bolt and a nut maybe some tie wraps. You're also gonna need some Stacon connectors and a crimp tool and some wire strippers and a screwdriver. These are basic hand tools that you probably have laying around. The Stacons, you can buy those off of amazon.com. You might also need a tap connector, which you can also find on amazon.com. Usually people use scotch locks, but I found these ones on amazon.com that I actually like a lot more. The backup alarm came from Git JPN. Uh, I can also put that in the description. They did not sponsor this video. I had to pay full price for the alarm and I really don't care because it's awesome. So anyway, let's get to the install. I've been wanting one of these for a while now. Might be silly, but I don't care. So this is my backup alarm. There's a wiring diagram on the internet. I'm not going to use it. You have three wires. I'm guessing that one of these is going to be your negative. One is going to be the melody and then one is going to be the actual backup alarm. It's in Japanese and it says something like caution vehicle backing up. I want to see how loud this thing is so we're going to try it out right now. One thing that you should definitely do is put a fuse on this even when you're testing it just in case the unit's faulty, pretty much anything electrical. You want to fuse it before you test it. With this, I'm probably going to run a switch and make it to where I can cut it off and to where I can switch from the melody or the backup alarm. And I'm going to show you how to do that. To test this out, we're going to take it right to the battery because we're idiots. I need a handy dandy vlogger tripod for this. These are really nice too buy one of these. I'll put the link in the description if you want to use one of these. So after looking at the description, I couldn't really tell what the hell wire is what. So I'm just going to assume that the black wire is the negative. Shouldn't do that. Don't assume that. If this blows up, I lost $100. I forgot to mention these are like $98. Right now they'd be polarity sensitive. I don't know. <laughs> this thing's loud. This thing's actually a little louder than I thought. Sweet! In all honesty, this does serve a purpose because this car has really bad visibility. Because I have a GTR wing with the gurney flap it's really hard to see out of the back of it so maybe this will save a kid or something or save me from getting hit I don't know maybe it'll distract somebody and it'll hit me even worse I like this thing already I like it a lot maybe I'll start modding this car finally this is my new favorite thing I want to put this on all the cars like seriously I want to put it on the Mustangs the Volvo pretty much everything I really might buy another one of these so uh, get Japan if you want to hook me up with another one, like if this video goes viral, please, please give me another one. I want it on my Mustang and my Volvo and a Z. I really need to get the Z done. All right, let's uh, install this on the car. So step one is probably going to be to gut your trunk a little bit. If you don't have a gutted trunk like me, you might want to remove this rear panel so you can access all your wiring that's going out to the rear of the car. Then you're going to want to trace out a couple wires. You want to tie this into your backup light which will be here on a skyline on some cars it's going to be like up here like somewhere depends what kind of car you got if you're unsure about it just put the car in reverse and 
you know, don't get ran over and see which light lights up. It should be a white light. I know that's a really obvious thing to say, but you know, let's be thorough. We're gonna take this out and see what color wire goes to this. You can also look at a wiring diagram. It's probably gonna be easier to find a wiring diagram for your car because it's probably not imported from a different country. With a Skyline, it was really hard to find a wiring diagram for this. So we're gonna take this light off and trace the wire to see which color is gonna be the hot for the backup alarm. Once you have this loose, you can trace out the wires a bit. It's a little dirty in here, but it looks like it's gonna be a green and white and a black. A black wire on a car is pretty much always gonna be your chassis ground or negative, whatever you would like to call it. Since we identified that, we can go ahead and put this back on. Your pink wire is gonna be your melody, your red wire is gonna be the backup alarm, and your black is gonna be your negative. So your next step is gonna be to find a place to mount this, and make sure it's kind of where you can throw your wires in your trunk, preferably. You don't wanna make splices outside. I mean, you can, but it's not really that big of a deal. But I prefer to have all my splices and wiring inside the car. This is gonna be louder if it's outside the car. It is waterproof. I guess it's considered water resistant, the website did say to mount this in a rain covered location. So I'm gonna mount it under the rear bumper. I happen to have a hole like underneath and on my gas tank, like right here. So I'm gonna throw it in that hole right there with a nut and bolt that I had laying around. So that puts us there. And then that allows us to get our wiring through here, which is where I took the wiring for our underglow. If you haven't watched that video, you can check that out. It's a pretty good one, I guess. It's some cheap underglow on Amazon. I took the underglow off recently because I was worried that I was going to go drifting and I would just tear it up because I went off road a couple times when I went drifting for the first time. But our wires will go right through here. You want to find a rubber grommet somewhere in your trunk. Most cars seem to have them in a spare tire well. It's kind of like a drain hole. That's where a lot of wiring can go. But yeah, let's mount it up. Factory wires aren't going to be the longest in the world, so you might have to extend these out a little bit. The black wire being a negative, we can just throw that right on a chassis ground. There's usually a lot of them in the trunk for like the brake lights and the reverse lights and everything, so we have one right here. I'm going to go ahead, strip this out, butt splice this onto the alarm. This is an electrical connector kit from Amazon. This comes with pretty much every kind of connector you would need, except for those tap connectors that we're gonna use. But we have a bunch of butts places here. Some people are gonna to prefer to go ahead and solder their connectors. Soldering is gonna be the best method. When you use solder, it holds better. It makes a better contact. But I don't feel like bringing out the soldering iron for some stuff that I wind up getting ripped off eventually. Who knows? I might wind up selling this car and I might want to put it on my 240Z at some point whenever I finish that. If you've never used a butt splice or a Stacon, basically this is a piece of metal covered in plastic. You throw this in some sort of crimp tool, put the wires in, crimp it down, and it splices it. Makes a connection that will never come apart unless you pull on it really, 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 really hard. This has a gauge rating on it. We're gonna to wanna to use one of the smaller gauges. This is 20 to 18 gauge. We're gonna go ahead and use that one. Go ahead, put it on the other. Sometimes with these style connectors, I like to throw a little bit of electrical tape around there just to give it a little bit of weatherproofing. You can also use a heat shrink type of connector, which is probably the best method. Soldering and heat shrink over top is kind of the best. We'll take our extended ground. People usually refer to this style connector as a fork. This will let you get underneath of the bolt. Reds are gonna be your smaller gauge. Blues are kind of like a medium gauge. And then yellow is gonna be thicker wire. Now that we have this connector on, we can go ahead, loosen this up a little bit, and throw this right under the bolt. And that will give us our negative. So 
So if you want the simplest setup, what you're gonna wanna do is just take this red wire and find your green and white that we identified earlier coming off of the reverse light. Then we put our tap connector right on that wire. To use these, you can see it's just like a little, little alligator almost. It's got a groove in here, you pinch this down, it cuts through the insulation on the wire. Then you throw another connector on the wire that you're tapping onto it and it gives you a power source. It doesn't break the wire. You don't have to splice this or anything with a big wire nut. Turn this on, put a little bit of pressure on it. Make sure the wire is lined up. And then take some pliers. Usually linemen's work best for this and pinch this down. Or you can just kind of work this back and forth until it cuts through the insulation. All right, so now we have our tap. So I'm gonna do the basic installation just so you can see it. The pink, we're just gonna cap off. We really don't want the melody. The melody's cool. I went out of my way to wait until the melody one was available that I wanted. I wanted the one that has, uh, I don't know how to say it, Apopopeman's March. That's the song that Nyango Star plays drums on, and that's how like I saw him. He's an apple cat, plays drums. I waited for that one to become available. I definitely want the melody to be used at some point. We're gonna use that on the switch installation. If you wanna do the switch installation, you can fast forward a little bit, we'll do that. But as for the basics, you're gonna wanna grab your tap kit, grab one of these connectors, go ahead, crimp it on, and then you can plug that right into the tap. Normally, you'd wanna take a butt splice and go ahead and splice this together to the red wire on the alarm. But because this is just temporary, just so I can show you what it looks like and what it sounds like, we're just gonna wire nut this. It's gonna go red to red. Well, our tap to the red. And then we should have a backup alarm. Since we're here, I guess we'll go ahead and temporarily put the Apopo Man's March, or I, I still don't know how to say that word. It means we need to go to our pink wire. Another idea that I was thinking about was to take a constant 12 volt source, put it on a switch, and then power up the pink wire. So if you were driving and you wanted a little melody playing while you were driving down like coastal highway during H2O, you can go ahead and turn that on. But I'm not gonna do that because I don't know, maybe, maybe in the future, I don't know yet. But let's go ahead and do the advanced install and put in a switch. Ideally, you'd want to use automotive wiring. You can find some of that on Amazon, but I'm just going to use the 18.3 that I have because it was free. So here's a switch that came off of Amazon.com. This thing's rated for 25 amps, 12 volts. It's made for cars. Basically, center is off. Up is going to close between two contacts, and then down is going to close between the other two contacts. The center terminal is going to be our hot coming off of our little tap right here. We're going to power that and then we're going to switch between the red and the pink. So in other words, when this switch makes, it's going to power up one sound and then this one will power up another sound and then we can put it in the center and have no sound if we want. If we want to just back up and not disturb the neighborhood. So let's go ahead and do that. This wire is usually used for building automation purposes. It's 18.3. It's a three conductor that's 18 gauge. I had a bunch of this laying around, so I'm gonna use this. When running any kind of wire through your car, make sure you don't run it near anything that's sharp and kind of sharp edges. My interior's already got it, so we're gonna run it with the factory wiring and also with the hot lead that goes to our underglow. We can take that right through some holes that are from the factory and it'll be pretty nice and easy. Then we're gonna take some tie wraps, secure everything. So earlier when I said that black is almost always used as a ground, we're not gonna use that as a ground right now. We're gonna actually use that as our feed for this. It's gonna feed the switch. Go ahead, strip this out. Get rid of that string in there. To make this as simple as possible, we're gonna do 
Black for our common on the switch, which will go to the center prong. We're gonna do red, which is gonna go to red, and it doesn't matter which side of the switch. And then white is gonna be our pink, which will go to another side of the switch. And put our butt splices on. Black is now gonna go onto our tap. When you're putting this on your tap, make sure that the prong part actually slides in. You can kind of slide on top or below because it's insulated. So make sure it's in there. Make sure it's in there all the way too when you press it in. Our white will go to our pink. And go ahead, finally, take your bread to your bread. So, for our switch, it has the holes that you want to actually wrap the wire in and solder, but I don't feel like soldering today. So, we're going to use our Stacons that are like this. These will actually stab onto the terminals. Make sure that these don't touch. I mean, if it does, it's just a switch. It's not going to ground, but you do want to make sure that none of these wires touch bare metal on the inside of the car. It's only 12 volts DC. It's not going to shock you or anything, but you really don't want this to touch the car inside anywhere. Or these. That's why I said maybe tape them up a little bit and make sure the wires ran out of the way and tidied up nice and neat. So you're also going to need some tie wraps, which you can get on Amazon.com. Link in the description below. So you're gonna wanna pick a spot on where to drill a hole and to mount this switch. I have a nice spot right down here. I was actually surprised that there's no holes drilled by previous owners on this car, but I'm eventually gonna drill a hole in this flap right here for turning this on and off. I figure that'll be nice and discreet and protect it. Go ahead, strip this wire. Then you have your black as your feed, put that in the center, that's considered your common. Then the switch is probably making this and this contact, so we'll make that our red. And then put our white right here. So we have an off, an alarm, off, melody. Let's test it out. With my car I can put it in reverse while the car is not started and the backup lights come on. Off. Melody. Alarm. And that's only when it's in reverse. Because we tapped off of the reverse lights. So thank you for watching this video. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and if you learned something. And also please consider subscribing because I really want to make it to 2,000 subscribers soon. I'm monetized now and a dollar a day helps keep my project cars alive. So thanks for watching and you have a great day.